स्टडी आई क्यू आई एस अब तैयारी हुई अफोर्डेबल हेलो नमस्कार 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 माय नेम इज पूजा द्विवेदी वेलकम टू माय क्लास द डेली करंट अफेयर्स इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल आई जस्ट वांट टू गिव यू अ जस्ट ऑफ व्हाट आई डू हियर आई टेक ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज रिलेटेड टू द यूपीएससी एग्जामिनेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू करंट अफेयर्स फ्रॉम द पास्ट 24 आवर्स एंड आई क्यूरेट क्वेश्चंस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द यूपीएससी प्रीलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन वी ऑल नो दैट वी हैव द अप्रोप्रिएट नॉलेज बेस एंड द कांसेप्ट्स क्लियर्ड बट If we do not have the proper skills for the UPSC prelims examination, we we may fall behind as compared to the others. So in these classes, I will try to make sure that you remember the skills that are employed. Moving ahead with the various events, before that, I would like to ask you to not make notes from my class. Why? Because I provide daily PDF on my Telegram channel that is by the name of Pooja Devi UPSC. If you want the link, this is the link of it. Okay, and. uh when we talk about asking questions if you have any doubts you can talk to me directly on my instagram okay pooja tivedi study iq upsc now let's move ahead and talk about the various events that we have to cover today first let's start talk about startups consider the following statements the number of women entrepreneurs stand at 14% more than half of these startups in india are in tier 2 and tier 3 cities Maharashtra has the highest number of scheduled caste entrepreneurs. So, what do we have to see? How many statements given above is or are correct? See, since the last few years, we are seeing that the number of women have increased in the startup culture, and the number of women entrepreneurs stand at fourteen percent. You need to remember all such facts because these are related to the marginalized communities, and when any particular segment is doing well. generally upsc can ask you question from that also more than half of the startups are not in tier 2 and tier 3 cities although it is very close to being 50% so second statement is incorrect right now we find that maharashtra stands at the top when it comes to having entrepreneurs from the scheduled caste next after that we have tamil nadu and tamil nadu has also invested a lot when it comes to developing scheduled caste entrepreneurs okay So first statement is correct second is incorrect third is also correct this was a fact based question once you have the facts in your hand you can employ the tools like this i will also take you through the concept based questions so first is correct second is on incorrect third is correct two only will be the correct answer union minister of state for electronics and it has said that india will witness ten fold increase in startups and unicorns in the next four to five years Right now we have one hundred and eight unicorns, and India will reach ten thousand in the next four to five years because of the cultural development that is taking place with respect to the startup culture. Also, India has over a lakh startups, and it will increase by ten times in the next few years. See, startup. What is a startup? It is a company in the first stages of operation. In India specifically, it can be incorporated as a private limited company or as a registered as a partnership form or a limited liability partnership so you have to remember these also the turnover of a startup or any company should be less than inr 100 crores in the last fiscal year then only it can be considered as a startup and it should be up to 10 years from the date of its incorporation to be a part of the startup india scheme it should be up to 5 years okay moving on it should work in the fields of innovation improvement of existing products services and processes and should have the potential to generate employment as well also an entity which is formed by splitting up or reconstruction of an existing business will not be considered as a startup please remember this all right moving on the startup india initiative was launched in the year 2016 sometimes it can happen upsc will not ask you direct questions like startup uh, initiative was started in which year but it can give you different schemes and missions which were started recently and you have to arrange them in a chronological order so from that perspective also you have to remember it okay 16th january 2016 sometimes it can also happen from the same year schemes can be asked but dates differ 16 january 25th may like this so you have to remember that as well do not think that upsc is incapable of concentrating of facts that trend has changed also there are over 99000 startups recognized by the government as of may 2023 49% of them close to 50% of them have a base in tier 2 and tier 3 cities as of march 31st 2023 
India is home to 108 unicorns and 44 of them were born in 2021, sorry 2022 and 21 were born in 2022. Okay, so this is the level of rise we are witnessing. Significantly, the number of women entrepreneurs has increased to 14%. Maharashtra tops the list when it comes to the number of MSMEs which are having entrepreneurs from the scheduled caste. Then we have Tamil Nadu. After that, we have Rajasthan. I have also given you the top three so that if it is asked in your examination about the top three, you can answer it. Moving on. Now, we have come up with our evening batch. If you like this class, we are going to take more such classes in our batches. These batches will be P2I batches. P2I batches means prelims mains as well as the interviews examination. First, for prelims, we have given you SIPs, that is success in prelims. These are the books along with the classes that are going to start from 22nd of July. These are evening batches classes and live in nature. That means teacher and the students will interact with each other. Other than this, you will also get one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. If you are finding any sort of problem regarding the preparation, mentors will help you. You can also talk to me directly. I will also help you through that among other faculties that are going to be there. Other than this, you will also find a lot of importance when it comes to prelims test series that are given over here. Main test series, answer writing practice, everything is given. Once you invest a meager amount of 29,999, that is a discounted price. If you use the code PDLIVE, you will get so much. And the mentors as well as the faculties here are not like the stern teachers. We are just like guides to you. So you will not find any sort of problem if you join Study IQ. This is my personal vouch to you. Also, if you have any questions regarding this batch, you can talk to me personally on my Instagram channel. Any question, I will guide you through it. So after that, you have to just ensure that you are preparing well with us. All right. The biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is that the mains residential program. The mains residential program is for those students who are going to qualify prelims 2024 and they will be called to the study IQ campus to have everything there, lodging facilities, everything will be provided to you. Just you have to prepare without any sort of distraction. After that, we have the arduous procedure of mock interviews for your interview as well. So do not at all worry once you just invest this particular amount of 29,999. And please, this is my humble request. Use the code PDLIFE, okay? And if you have any questions, I repeat any questions regarding the batch or the UPS examination, talk to me personally on my Instagram channel. Okay, I will guide you through there. Moving on to the next question. With respect to the PM Mitra scheme, consider the following statements. Mitra parks under the scheme can be, can only be, the keyword here is only, only be a greenfield project. Each Mitra park will be led by a special purpose vehicle, which is created for the purpose of park registered under the Companies Act of 2013. Under the scheme, it is the responsibility of the state government to provide a parcel of land of at least 1000 acres of land. So what do we have to see? We have to see how many statements is or are not correct. Under the PM Mitra scheme, key locations are being chosen so that we can create parks over there. These parks are not our playground parks where we will take our kids or we will go by ourselves to enjoy. <laughs> this is a park where you will find the facilities which are able to ensure that textiles remain at the top when it comes to the global market. That means it will, have, it will have various facilities, various infrastructure that will help develop textiles industry. This is what the meaning of it is. And they can, under this, under this scheme, Mitra parks under the scheme can not only be in a greenfield project but also a brownfield project. What is the difference between the two? Greenfield projects are those projects on which no development has taken place. And brownfield are those projects under which or on which some development has taken place. So this is the difference between the two. And the Mitra parks can be fitting in either of the categories, not only in greenfield, but also for brownfield. So first statement for that matter of fact is definitely incorrect. Then each Mitra park has a special purpose vehicle which is created as an as a legal agency and this special purpose vehicle will be registered under the Companies Act of 2013. See now UPSC doesn't want those kind of children or those kind of aspirants who are just you know preparing from the magazines just reading few parts of it superficially appearing in this examination and qualifying this. The trend has changed a lot. We are a new generation. We have so much access as compared to the previous generations. That is why UPSC expects 
of us to exploit those resources i am here to help you through that you may not find this in any of the books these are from government websites and government websites from that only you will find questions most of the time so this is what i mean when i talk about looking beyond books i do guide the students on my telegram channel regarding this so if you have any problem you can be a part of it then not the part of the problem but the telegram channel now as i told you special purpose vehicle is a legal agency which will be created for each separate part not only for one part but every part and this is jointly created by the center and the state and it is registered this special purpose vehicle will be registered under the companies act of 2013 and under this scheme it is the responsibility of the state government yes the parcel of land on which the park has to be created it is not the responsibility of the center it is the responsibility of the state government among other things okay so first is incorrect second is correct third is also correct two and three not correct one only will be the correct answer over here okay moving on prime minister has said that the foundation stones for two pm mitra mega textile parks have been laid these two parks will come in amravati maharashtra and navsari gujarat okay and this pm mitra scheme is to fulfill the 5f vision of the prime minister what is the 5f vision farm to fiber to factory to fashion to foreign that means from farm we will get the important raw materials for textiles we will make into fiber those raw materials then we go to the factory so that we can develop textiles and these textiles will be a part of the fashion and when the fashion will be given a thumbs up in the country it will go to the foreign countries so this is the 5f vision and the main aim is to develop large scale and integrated world class industrial facilities for the textile industry to build scale reduce logistic cost and also improve competitiveness logistic cost as in if everything is available at one place transportation charges will come down logistic cost will come down issues regarding cost and time efficiencies will also be taken care of then the ministry of textile will be the overall supervisor of the execution and an spv special ve purpose vehicle which is owned by the center and the state government jointly will be set up for each park that will oversee the implementation of the project and this will be registered under the companies act of 2013 government of india will pay for the 49% of it and the state government 51% of the paid up capital remember that sometimes upsc can trick you through these in depth questions as well the responsibilities of the state include providing the contiguous and encumbrance free land of 1000 acres reliable also remember this it can also be put as 10000 500 this is to check if you have studied well or not so this is the skill that you need to develop filtering out the information and once you regularly attend this class you will understand how to filter out the information this is my personal vouch and if you re regularly you you know take up these classes nobody can beat you in current affairs just do this and editorials reading from the newspaper and then you go to my telegram channel you will find the pdf revise from that you will become the king or the queen of current affairs then reliable power supply and water availability waste water disposal system this all is the responsibility of the state an effective single window clearance conducive and stable industrial textile policy is also the responsibility of the state government remember that because this could get into a very tricky get developed into a very tricky question that the policy part is also the central government's plan no but conducive and stable industrial or textile policy is the is the onus of the state government now consider the following protected areas nora dehi wildlife sanctuary gandhi sagar wildlife sanctuary shahgar balch mukundra tiger reserve how many of the above mentioned areas have been proposed as a site for reintroduction of cheetahs we have read only about kuno right there are other sites which have been proposed as a habitable zone for the cheetahs this is why Uh, we have to know about them so as we know nora dehi yes it has been proposed gandhi sagar shahgar and mukundra all have been proposed as a potential site for the reintroduction of the cheetahs so all four will be the correct answer former union environment minister jairam ramesh has said that the ntca has given a statement about the deaths of cheetahs that are occurring over there and it is just a political whitewash The NTC has said that 
eight cheetahs as of yet have been uh, have died and some have been killed by other cheetahs some uh, because of wounds so they say that it is due to natural causes but actually it is a problem of the management and right now the management that is needed for the stabilization of cheetahs population our policy doesn't support it so we are like bound to just keep them as they are right now although some uh, steps have been taken so cheetahs happen to be the only large carnivore that got completely wiped up from india because of over hunting as well as habitat loss when their habitat got shorter and smaller they extincted because they prey their prey base also got smaller cheetah comes from a sanskrit word which means the spotted one it means as a nonix uh, jubatus venaticus upsc has also got into asking the asking about the scientific names so remember the scientific names as well cheetahs live in open plains such as grassland scrub forest system they live in semi arid and arid environments uh, semi arid environments and temperature tends to be hotter compared to the cooler regions where they live kura is probably the only wildlife site in the country where there has been a complete re complete relocation of the village from inside the park village had to be taken out and relocation had to be done but it is also the only place right now where tiger lion leopard and cheetah used to coexist and that was in harmony pune in madhya pradesh but other sites also include uh, gandhi sagar nora dehi the shahgar bulge and mukundra tiger reserve okay so this is what i have given you so that if it is asked in your examination you can check from the pdf and then go and do it correctly consider the following statements the department of land resources has achieved 94% digitization of land records targets pan india the aim is to achieve 100% saturation of the core components of digitization of land records in all the districts of the country by the year 2023 month of december so which of the statements given above is or are correct c the department of land resources has already completed 94% of the digitization of the land records which is a really good thing because it will create a lot of impact on the judiciary the judiciary has to go on a manual basis to the khasras and the khatonis so in order to remove that issue land records had to be digitized and that has been done 94% so this is a good thing secondly the aim is to have a 100% saturation of the all the components of the land records in digital format by the year 2024 march okay so first is correct second is not correct one only will be the correct answer because the question is asking us to do the correct one president draupadi murmu will present bhumi samman 2023 in new delhi on tuesday for the first time ever this particular award will be given and this will be given to the nine state secretaries and 68 district magistrates like you all will become when you all will become the dms of different districts you will be available to get this award al along with your teams of course and if you work well so achieving saturation of the core components of digital india land records modernization program this is a part of this only digital india land records modernization program under this only this bhumi samman uh, award is being given it shows central center and state cooperative federalism that means how the union is getting help from the states because states are responsible for the grading system uh, on because of uh, the states provision of the reports this grading system is possible that is why cooperative federalism and i have already told you about this so let's move on india's first ever local currency settlement arrangement has been with which of the following countries france malaysia papua new guinea uae prime minister modi has brought laurels right now if you see i'm not just talking about him as a personality that is out of the picture this representation of the country that he is doing the laurels and the respect he is getting in the global arena is not because of him as a person it it is because the way he has taken india on the top of the world right now because of the schemes he has introduced because of the schemes his his government has introduced this is what is being shown don't think that it is because of just one person it is because of everyone who is working together under one common umbrella and it is actually the respect that india is getting through him okay remember that so whatever respect he is getting it's india's respect that he is getting okay 
So India has gotten many important deals from France, from UAE, from every other country that uh, the Prime Minister has visited. Because India, this is the time of India. India will surpass USA soon as the second largest economy. That means it will become the second largest economy by the year 2075. This has been said. So we have to remember all this. Okay. So France, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, UAE. With UAE, we have reached our first ever local currency settlement. That means the settlement that we have reached is with respect to bilateral trade. The bilateral trade will be done in dirham and rupees. This is what I'm trying to say over here. Okay. So in a significant move to strengthen economic ties as United Arab Emirates is our third largest trading partner in the world. India and the UAE have signed a historic MOU on the local currency settlement. This is a move of de-dollarization. That, that means we will depend on our currency, not dollars anymore. Because depending on one currency is a lot, is a lot of work. So Reserve Bank of India and the Central Bank of the UAE have signed this MOU. This system allows for the use of the Indian rupee and the UAE dirham. In, this is India's first ever LCS arrangement. Remember that this could be asked in your prelims examination. And it will have an impact on the transaction cost as well as processing time because it is dependent on local currencies. It will also increase reliance on the local currencies and traders and businesses will have the flexibility to choose the payment currency based on mutual agreement. They could either say that let's, uh, you know, trade in rupees or dirham like that. Okay. Moving on to the next question with respect to the hula given, consider the following statements. It is the only ape of India. The Western hula gibbon are the largest gibbon in the world. The only two species of hula gibbons found in India are designated, as, are designated as vulnerable in the IUCN red list. So how many of the statements given above is or are correct? What is an ape? Apes are tailless monkeys and they tend to be as intelligent as humans. And yes, hula gibbon in India, they are the only apes in India. The Western Hula Gibbon are actually the second largest gibbon in the world. After one more gibbon, I will tell you about that. And we have the Western Hula Gibbon and Eastern Hula Gibbon. Gibbon. Only two species of Hula Gibbons exist in India, Western and Eastern. And both are designated as vulnerable. Okay. So first is correct, second is incorrect and third is correct. So how many are correct? Two only are correct. The conservation status of India's only ape, that is the Hula Gibbon, has become a cause of concern. There is an alarming news that all 20 species in the world are at a high rate of extinction. Since 1900, they, dis they were dist distributed and the populations, their distribution and population both have declined. So I am going to show you who are Hulog Gibbons. These are Hulog Gibbons. All right. Moving on. These are the smallest. Remember, remember. And the fastest of all apes and live in tropical and subtropical forest of the southeastern part of Asia. They are unique in India's northeast. It is one of the 20 species of gibbons on the earth and they are estimate, their estimated population of hula gibbons, the estimated population is 12,000, just 12,000. When it comes to Indian gibbons, they are tree dwelling, dwelling monogamous, that means they will be, uh, you know, remain, they will be remaining loyal to only one other hula gibbon and they are also territorial apes. The males and females, they have different body colors. So remember that sometimes UPSC can ask you about the differences of males and females of a species as well. And of course, males retain the black color while females change it again at the onset of puberty around 6 to 8 years. In India, we have two gibbons. Western, two gibbons as in two species of gibbons. Western hulog gibbon and eastern hulog gibbon. Western are known as hulog hulog and eastern one is known as hulog leosonidus. Okay. And this is the other gibbon, which is the largest gibbon in the world. And it is known as Siamang. Okay, this is the Siamang gibbon. Now, Western Hula gibbon are found in Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Tripura, Meghalaya, Mizoram, as well as Manipur. And they are also found in Bangladesh and Myanmar. So remember that sometimes UPSC can ask us that they are found only in India. No, but also Bangladesh and Myanmar. Okay, moving on. Eastern Hula gibbon, they are not so common in India. So remember, Western is more common, Eastern is not so common and they are found only in the Dibang Valley. Here only word is there. Okay, remember please. Sometimes it can happen you think that when extreme words are used such as uh, only, all. So these will be definitely wrong. But with respect to 
ईस्टर्न फूल ऑक्यूबेंट दे आर फाउंड ओनली इन दी दिबांग वैली इन अरुणाचल प्रदेश एंड सदिया रिवर फॉरेस्ट ऑफ आसम रिमेंबर दैट एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया दे आर फाउंड इन म्यांमार एंड चाइना टू ओके रिमेंबर दैट आई विल गिव यू दी पीडीएफ टू रिवाइज इट the adult male of the eastern hula gibbon they differ from the western ones then conservation status as i already told you in the iuc and red list they both are vulnerable okay with respect to nomadic elephant exercise consider the following statements it was for the first time conducted in 2004 this exercise this year the exercise is being conducted in mongolia and it is conducted biennially so how many statements are correct okay so let's talk about this c nomadic elephant exercise is an army exercise between india and mongolia it was conducted for the first time ever in 2004 this is correct and this year it is being conducted in ulaanbaatar mongolia because it happens on a uh, alternate basis sometimes india sometimes mongolia then india then mongolia then india then mongolia like that alternatively it is actually conducted annually not biennially biennially means once in two years no this is an annual exercise remember annually so first is correct second is correct third is not correct two only will be the correct answer this current exercise will be the 15th edition and this will be in ulan batar mongolia this is the map this is going to show you where is ulan batar over here okay and this will conduct uh, will be conducted between indian army soldiers from jammu and kashmir light infantry regiment and soldiers from mongolian armed forces unit 084 this is a platoon level exercise that means only a dozen soldiers are uh, employed in this exercise and the main theme is counter terrorism operation in mountainous terrain this is happening under the un mandate the first edition was in 2004 the training exercise it is between india and mongolia alternates between india and mongolia last edition happened in baklo it was conducted in october 2019 okay this is also a fact worth remembering now i hope you understood these many topics the pdf will be provided on my telegram channel any questions without any hesitancy do ask me okay thank you so much for watching study iq is ab taiyari hui affordable